coming to you from the Deep South. This is the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. High impact leadership is not reserved for leaders, and it has nothing to do with your position, title, or rank. However, it does have everything to do with your character. It's time to climb to the next level and beyond, personally and professionally. Now, let's start making it happen with your host, Max Story. Hello, and thanks for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast today, or for watching on on the Blue Collar uh, Leadership YouTube channel. So today, got got a, a another great guest to contribute to our uh, real people getting real results video series, and that's Mr. Leandris Whedon. I got that name right, Leandris. You got it right, Mac. <laughs> All right, man. So thank thank you for participating. You know what we're really trying to do with this this series is is people talk with people who want to help people. So that's really what you're doing is you're, you're doing me a favor by coming on our platform and, and helping us help people with your story. Stories, stories are powerful. So before we really dive into all this stuff, I just like to, uh, I've learned to start asking folks, how, how do we know each other, Leandris? How do we come to know each other? Why are you on this show today? You think? Oh man, I, uh, it was back in October of last year. Uh, Mac and Rhea were out at, LCI conference uh, in Detroit, which LCI is Lean Construction Institute, but they brought them in as the closing note speaker. And uh, they, they did a phenomenal job addressing the crowd and they gave out a book there um, at that conference. I didn't so happen to get one of those books, but I saw the book and I ordered it on uh, Amazon. And shoot, I got that book and I bet I read that book in uh, about two or three days. and. I sent Mac a message on LinkedIn. It's like, hey, Mac, I really appreciate this book you suggested and, and coming out to the LCI conference. And uh, I started paying attention to a lot of things that was getting posted and that, that Mac was liking. And we kind of developed a relationship from there. So that's how I met Mac. Yeah, man. And, and that was Blue Collar Kaizen leading Lean and Lean Teams. Is that the one you got? Yep. Yep. That's the one. Yeah. And so so that- since then, shoot, I, I bet I've had a. Uh, probably about four or five of them. I even got one of Rhea's books. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rhea's the real deal now. She don't play around. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so that's cool, man. And you know what you just described there? That's one reason that, that we do know each other now because you were proactive. I mean, you were, you were at the, you were at that conference anyway, There's like 1500 people there. I always tell people we, we don't always go to talk to everybody. We go talk to somebody and I don't usually know who that is till later. And you definitely one of those somebodies because you, you reached out and uh, we got to know each other and we've been talking. And, and what I, what I learned about you was you somebody who's intentional about your growth. And, and we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit later, but you know, I just, I just want you to sh- tell folks, you know, what, what you do now, how you got there about your okay. journey, whatever you personal story, professional story, or both of them, whatever you want to do, man. Oh yeah. I, I can start on that, man. My journey, uh, I tell people uh, construction's in my DNA. You know, I've uh, been been around construction pretty much since I was a kid. Uh, my dad, great grandfather, great great grandfather, they all came up in the carpentry industry. So I okay. started work when I was about uh, 12 years old. We used to do uh, fire restoration jobs in St. Louis, where I grew up at, and we'd go in and we'd take homes or, or small businesses that caught on fire, and we do everything from the floor joists all the way up to the roofs. You know, wow. everything in between, finishing work, plumbing, uh, concrete, shingles, did it all. So that's how I got into uh, construction. And now I'm in commercial construction, ended up getting a degree in construction management, business minor. Uh, been in the industry right now, uh, going on 19 years this year. So wow, primarily, 19 yep, 19 years doing, uh, most of it's been in healthcare construction. So it's been a uh, very rewarding rewarding experience to see some of the facilities that we've had an opportunity to construct. That's awesome. So you started out though, that, that, that restoration, you were doing the dirty work. Oh yeah. We, we was in there, uh, literally had our sore horses out. I remember, uh, glazing windows back in the day with the old putty knife, we'd have a heater heating it up. I mean, my grandfather pretty much taught us everything, you know, from, from, uh, how to build buildings back from when they catch on fire all the way up to finishing work. So I was uh, doing the labor work. I was 
what what I was going to call, I was going to be a carpenter is what I thought I was going to be until I got about 17. I was like, man, I, I think I'm going to find another way. I don't know if I want to work with my tool belt the rest of my life. <laughs> so what happened at 17? What what changed or what did you do different at 17? Uh, I, I remember sitting on the porch. I remember this like it was yesterday, sitting on the front porch out in uh, north uh, city suburbs of uh, St. Louis. And I was sitting there. It was probably, you know, 98 degrees. 60% humidity. And I was like, man, this is, this is some tough work. You know, I don't know if I want to do this the rest of my life. And I, and I told my grandfather, I said, granddad, I, I appreciate everything you've done for me, everything you taught you and my dad. And, uh, but I, I, th I think I want to find a different route, you know, in construction. He says, well, if you choose to do that, you know, that's up to you, but you can always fall back on this. That's why I taught you this trade. So I, I started looking at some things and that's how I got in, uh, interested in civil engineering at first and then switched over to construction management. Yeah, that's awesome. Granddad did teach you some good stuff because you can't always fall back. Anybody who's got a skill like that, they, they, they ain't ever going to go hungry unless they got no. bad character. <laughs> 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 you got bad character. It don't matter what kind of degrees you got. It don't matter nothing. You're going to struggle to to have a, have a, a meaningful job, a meaningful income. Oh, yeah. So you got you. So so you decided to go to college to get a degree to do what you're doing now. Yep. I went to college. Uh got involved uh, with civil engineering first and then uh, got involved with construction management, graduated from there in 2005 and really didn't know what I was going to do coming out of school. I just knew I wanted to work and um, didn't really have a whole lot of guidance because I didn't know anybody really in commercial construction space. So I ended up uh, landing with a design build, a healthcare contractor out of St. Louis and everything took off from there. I remember there was a recruiter that told me uh, I grew up there. And they did work all over the country. They were national. And he says, man, if uh, just go for a year, you know, if you don't like it, you can always come back to St. Louis. And they sent me up to, um, it was a place in Lapeer, Michigan, just outside of uh, Flint, about 20 minutes. And I went up there and I ain't looked back since. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've been tearing it up. So where are you at now? What city? Uh, currently, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. So I work for a company called Layton Construction uh, in their healthcare group based out of Nashville. Uh, still work across the country. I'm right now. Uh, we got projects that I'm working on in about ten different states. So, doing a, a lot of um, lean coaching, mentoring, uh, supporting project teams. Uh, really, just trying to get the word out in our industry. We're a little um, resistant to change at times in construction. So, you know, talking to folks about uh, lean. Sometimes you have to change the terminology of what it is. But really, you know, how how do we do things better? And what we do every day you know how do we get involved in that continuous improvement mindset so that that's really something that i've become passionate about here lately yeah and you're active on linkedin i see you i mean you you're using your linkedin platform to to teach coach and mentor other people right oh yeah i see a lot of stuff yeah, that, out there that linkedin uh most of the stuff i i, I put out there is it's not original it's 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 really all in books that i'm reading you know uh i think i set a goal and I want to say a couple of years ago to, to try to read a book uh, 30 minutes a day, listen to a podcast on the way into work. So a lot of the stuff, uh, something stand out to me, it'll pop up. I'll, I'll jot it down on my phone, talk to it as I'm, as I'm uh, driving or whatnot. And then I'll make a little post on it. It's just real simple stuff, but it's almost so just giving people those little nuggets to see to like, hey, you know, this is something that could uh, change somebody's day one day, you know what I mean? And I'll tell you a uh, real world example. I was uh, in St. Louis a couple weeks ago. I went to this uh, vegan bakery and I walk in there and I asked the guy, I said, Hey, how you doing? He's working behind the register. He says, uh, I'm okay. And immediately I said, man, what, what would take that? Okay. To I'm great. And he says, uh, you know, I just got some stuff going on at home, you know, and I don't really want to talk about it. And I said, man, everything you're describing sounds like a circumstance. You know, I, I wouldn't, necessarily let that circumstance determine who you are as an individual good and stuff he, and he paused for a second and he's like man uh you're right you know i never thought about it like that and so uh i said yeah man you know it's uh there's a guy eckert too wrote this book and he said he had the three c's of success you know uh close yesterday choose today and create tomorrow and i said man if you uh if you take those three things with you of anything else we talk about in this little interaction i, I said i would take that away and he says, man, you know what? I'm going to uh, do that. He said, you know, I just try to go, whether it's at work or if it's out in the world, just uh, spread the goodness of all this this knowledge that's out here that some people may or may not have access to. So, yeah, that's that's a good story. If I knew you're going to tell stories like that, I'd put on my helmet so I could charge <laughs> through the walls if I needed to, because 
that kind of stuff gets me fired up, right? I mean, that's yeah. I mean, what you just what you know for everybody watching, and and for you, you know what you did, but but I'm gonna elevate it even if, and just in case you don't know, there's people listening who may not know. That just sounds like a cool story to them, but to me, I hear what I hear, and I heard this quote from uh, Bob Chapman, the CEO of Barry Waymiller. He they actually headquartered up in St. Louis, but. I heard him say, or I read it somewhere, sometime or another. He said, uh, uh, "We're suffering. We're suffering from a leadership malpractice." Mm-hmm. And all, all you did, you went up to the counter to buy something, right? That's what that story yeah. was about. You went in the store to buy whatever you were buying there, get something to eat or whatever, drink. So yeah, I went so up you there and buy a the, nice little sandwich, man. <laughs> uh, buy what? Buy a nice sandwich to eat. That's okay, what, that's the kind of the interaction I had with that guy. Yep, just a short interaction, but. But but you you saw and you just shared with us that guy was receptive to leadership. He was receptive to somebody believing in him. He was receptive. Or was it he or she? It was a he, right? Guy. He was a he. Yeah. Yeah. So so he he was receptive to 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 being led well. That's all you did was lead him well. You're not his boss. His boss should be leading him like that. But obviously the guy walk you walk up and the guy's feeling like that. He don't have anybody there pumping him up being his cheerleader. That's what you were for a, for a minute right there. Made a big difference. Yes, sir. It did. It really did. And I could tell just by, you know, he came back and he brought my food over and he was really, uh, really appreciative of just that. You know, we, we probably had a two minute conversation there at the counter. Yeah, man. You know, Rhea and I, we met somebody, uh, a, a waiter out in Tucson, Arizona. We were speaking out there quite a few years ago. And, and I just believed in that guy the same way. I do that everywhere. Probably just like you. That's what high impact impact people do. Right. We try to help other people have a better life. Oh yeah. It, and that guy, he bought a lot of my books. He followed me for a long time. He ended up joining the army. He was a young guy at the moment, but his grand he told his grandmother he wanted a bunch of my books for Christmas, and she ordered the books. And, and so he stayed in contact quite a while. I hadn't heard from him lately, but I heard from him for several years just from a conversation, just mm-hmm. like you. I was telling him, I said, I don't know who you are, where you're going, but I, you you got a lot of potential. I could just see yes. it in him, and and you do too, Lee Andrus. I mean, you you've came a long way from. From doing the dirty work down there with your grandpa, but you just getting warmed up, man. You oh, yeah. so your leadership journey, reading these type of books. When I say these type of books, I'm you know what I'm talking about. Personal growth, leadership development. Yeah. That's you that intentional journey just started a, two, three years ago, you're saying, or that um you know, up up until about I say about three years ago, you know, before then, uh, I was kind of one of those people where I graduated from college. I, I didn't want to read a book. You know what I mean? I was like, I don't need to read a book. You know, I'd rather, you know, I want to watch ESPN or I want to watch football. And then uh, something, something went off in my mind one day. I was like, you know, uh, if I want to go to certain places, then I'm going to have to do some things that I probably hadn't done. And I'll tell you, uh, I started doing it and then I stopped for a while. And then, uh, like I say, last year, right before, I see it was probably a couple months before uh, that LCI Congress. I kind of got back into that groove. I said, I need to be intentional with this. And then when I heard um, even that the closing or the opening speaker there, when he was talking about innovation and then you all closed it out, I was like, you know what? This is this is a, a sign. I need to just get back on it. So I started doing it and it, I made um, the same way I reached out to you. I started reaching out to other authors on LinkedIn. And, you know, I said, hey, I just got your book and, you know, I'm reading through it. They do the same thing. Hey, let me know what you what you think about it. You know, so I mean, I've done that probably three or four times, and I always ask for another book recommendation. Like, what do you what do you all suggest is a good book? You know, for leadership or personal growth. And so I found by doing that, um, it's almost like a missing link, especially in, in probably not only in construction but in a lot of industries. Nobody's talking about character development. We're talking about getting stuff done. Go go go. Start as much work as we can. Finish all the work. Nobody's saying that, you know, as hard as you work on at your job, you should be working even harder on yourself. So there's, there's not a lot of people out there that's teaching that. And that, that's one of the things that I gravitated towards in this. Yeah, you're right. And there are not many. And and that's what we do. We we go all around the country searching out for searching for people like you or or in any industry at any level, just people who are hungry because anybody who grows and develops themselves and gets results, they, they going to motivate and inspire other people to do the same. The, the ones who are not doing that, they don't know nothing about it. That's, that's why they ain't doing it. And unfortunately, yeah. that's the majority of people that don't know anything about it. But so you, you've you shared a lot of things. I want to try to get you to just dig down a little bit deeper. So, okay. 
so you started out doing all the dirty work and and then you went to college you still a blue collar mm -hmm. guy though or you had done switched over to become a white collar guy you know uh <laughs> i would like to say i'm still a blue collar guy you I are. Still, uh, <laughs> but I, I will also say that uh, I, I've developed what I would call uh, psychological flexibility. You know, I'm comfortable I in like all it. situations. You know, I can go out and I, I can talk to the folks out there hanging the drywall as well as I can go have a conversation with the CEOs and CFO. And we can talk about return on investment capital, net present value, whatever. So, yeah, I, I, I want to be able to be comfortable being uncomfortable in any situation. Yep. So. You still, you still, you still do some some of that dirty work at home or at work every now and then. Oh, I still do it at work. You, you I don't have no problem picking up a broom, uh, getting up on the ladder or a scaffold, uh, helping to trade out. You know. Yeah. So you still uh, a blue collar guy, white collar guy. They don't do all that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against them. Yeah. We got to have them too. Nothing against them. But the reason I'm asking you that because I always tell people, and I'm usually talking about me, but if you ever. Uh, if you ever truly a blue collar person, you're going to always be a blue collar person. It don't matter yep. if you ride in an executive jet and you got a limo to pick you up at the airport. If you're a blue collar guy in your blood, you're going to always be a blue collar guy. You might develop a white collar mind to go with your blue collar, your character, but, but, but you, you still a blue collar guy. <laughs> oh yeah. Absolutely. And, and that's awesome. Yeah. I, Rhea, Rhea calls when she talks about me, what you just described, she says, I'm like a social butterfly. I, I can fit in anywhere. I, I can put on the suit and the tie and wear just all yep. the clothes I don't like to wear and be fine in it. And and uh, but but that ain't really who I am. I'm a blue collar guy. I'd rather have on a shirt like this with some jeans and and some hiking boots. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, I'm, so I'm that, about the same way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that and that's awesome. But so uh, the other thing I was going to ask you. So you said you got four or five of my books. You is that right? Did you say two or yeah. three of? I can't remember. Yeah, I got about, uh, I want to say at least four. Um, okay. Because a lot of them, I got the first one, I got the second one, I got the one about high performing teams, I got the one you give out there, I got the one uh, that Rhea gave, or that written about the uh, climbing the ladder of influence. Yeah. And then the reason I got that one was really because of uh, Jason. When when his uh, deal that he does the first Saturdays every month, and so I read that thing and then I enjoyed even getting in on those calls. I don't know if a lot of people are aware of it, but Mac actually, he's been mentoring a guy uh, named Jason and he invites people to come in to this show. And it's almost like a study action team. And I was like, man, let me get this book. Cause the first time I felt out of place. I was like, I need to order that book. I'm ordering it now. <laughs> so, so, so you travel around the country and you, you've been in, you've seen a lot, a lot of different uh, construction organizations and businesses. Have, have you ever, have you ever seen anybody doing what Jason's doing at a, at any level, but especially at like, he's a VP of, of electrical construction. You ever seen anybody um, volunteer to do that? You know, to be honest, I, I can't say that I have, man, especially on a Saturday, you know, there's uh what I would call uh, people do leadership developments all the time, you know, but uh, there was a book I was reading the only leaders worth following. And in that book, it talked about people providing, what solutions for who issues and that's almost like a what solution for who issue it's really the character of the person it's not necessarily what they do but who they are but we giving them these what solutions for all these things so that's kind of what that is but what jason's doing i mean he's he's right there on, on the mm -hmm. ground level really growing with all these people that are in this room anybody that's hungry he, he's willing to feed them with this leadership group that, that's exactly right and so what did, what did you feel when you experienced that first First of all, did you feel just as a guest? Because he will let anybody anywhere join, and he does it. Yep. For the folks listening, it's the first Saturday of the month. And if, you, if you're listening or watching, he was actually the first person I interviewed during this interview series. So you can go back uh, and, and, and find him on the Blue Collar Leadership YouTube channel if you want to watch the, the video or episode 378 on, on my podcast. You can hear Jason talk. But what did you... What did you feel? Because you really didn't know what you was even about to, to see when you logged in, right? You had no idea. You just thought, no idea. You, hung, you hungry. That's why you logged in, but yeah. you didn't know what you were going to see. No, I logged in and, uh, you know, you can feel the energy just, just in the room on the podcast, even though you're virtual. Uh, I mean, literally, it, it's a book. It's it's almost like, you know, everybody come in. We're all family here. We we come here to, to gather and really learn together. You know, it's like, like lifting as we climb, you know, it's a, uh, it made it feel like, you know, if, if everybody gets better, we all get better. 
you know, kind of like that old saying, you know, if you can get everybody rowing in the same direction, you can do some great things. So that's, that's really what, what it felt like. And, and I don't even work for them, you know what I mean? But here I am just sitting in listening and, uh, you know, I'm allowed to chime in, give, give my opinion of what I see in there and then take away some, some uh, takeaways from what everybody else is doing. So it was uh, what I would call basically a, a big study action team, you know, but it was geared around leadership. And to me, leadership is kind of like uh, Maxwell says, is it's influence, nothing more, nothing less. So the fact that they're influencing all those people and then all those people have a, a sphere of influence, it's just spreading that influence around. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely something to witness. Yeah, that's, 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 it is pretty powerful. I mean, it's, it's awesome to see him, him doing that. And he's been doing it for a long time now. So, uh, when, when you, when you, first of all, you heard us speak, then you ordered the Blue Collar Kaizen book because you were interested yeah. in lean. So, you, you got anything that resonates that you took away? Or what, what about reading that book caused you to order the other books? Because you could have said, nah, nah, this, this stuff, this, <laughs> like, this guy talking some smack, I ain't worried about. Uh, I'll tell you the first, one of the first things I noticed was, uh, that each chapter is only three pages. You like so that? You can, you can go through there. I love that. You know, you can say, oh, you know, I read, uh, you know, five chapters today, you know, but out of those five chapters, uh, it starts off with a quote from somebody else. So it, it, it literally, it equips you with, I mean, so many things, just nuggets you can take away from these books to the, short, the fact that they're short. You can use them the same way Jason does, just internally at a job site, you know, say, hey, I'm going to go over, you know, um, a seven minute lesson today. And we're going to talk about this before we start talking about anything. Kind of like structure, we have what we call safety moments. So yeah. from that, I almost took away, like, I can take these same books and I can do a leadership moment. And I can start giving this to, to people on my job sites, you know, just and, and eventually they're going to be like, man, this guy must really you know, value leadership because he's talking to us about safety. He's talking to us about leadership. He's talking to us about quality, assurance, quality control. So just weaving that whole piece in there, these books makes it very easy to do that. And you get a lot of knowledge from other leadership authors because it's loaded with quotes. So that, that yeah. was really the one thing I liked about it. And literally, and, and it, it, if you get into it, yeah, you can read that thing three days easy. You know, one reason I do that because there's quotes from people I don't necessarily like as people, but I like what they mm -hmm. said and I'm giving them credit for for saying it. And, you know, I may not like the life they live in or the life they led. And, you know, I learned from John Maxwell a long time ago. He said, the only thing bad about, you know, quoting somebody in a book is they may change later. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got some big, long stories in some of his books about some people who were doing good stuff, but now they, yep. they got terrible character, you know, later in life, they don't fell off yeah. the wagon, but now they kind of in the book. <laughs> yep. But, that was, but that's uh, just part of it. But yeah, one one reason I do that too, Lee Andrus, is you know people are reading the blue collar brand, blue collar leadership brand is is for the blue collar folks to know, hey, this stuff is for you because it's got their name, you know, right here across the title. You know, they know it's for them when they see that. And yep. but I want my stuff to be a bridge for for a lot of people who ain't never read any books, like like you were talking about. Or you graduated college, you didn't re re think you had to read any more books, and. A lot of people graduate high school and think they never had to read any more books. And some people quit <laughs> high school and think they never had to read any more books. And, and yep. you don't have to. But but I want you to help me right here. And I've been asking, I think everybody I've asked this so far that I've interviewed, you kind of touched on it. But a lot of people say blue collar folks, they don't like to read. But you like to read. We done figured out you're a blue collar guy. Oh, you yeah. know other blue collar people who read? Is, is, that a, is that a stereotype that ain't actually true, you believe? Uh you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it a step further, Mac. I'm not even gonna say it's blue collar people. I'm gonna say the vast majority of people in society don't like to read because everything is so readily available through social media, through a Google search. You can pretty much find anything you want. Um, and I'll tell you how I know because I started intentionally asking people randomly in the last maybe six months, you know, what's the last three books you read? Man, you get uh, almost like deer in the headlights sometimes, you know? <laughs> And, and and then I have found some of my friends that uh they, they they do read books. I mean, a lot of them listen to audio, but um, I think Byron Godet uh, said it best. Uh, you got to figure out whether you want to be in the uh, fantastic few or the mediocre many. You know, oh, well, to be mediocre, you don't need Where's to my read books. Everybody is not reading books, so you can fit right in. You know, nobody ever noticed the difference. But if you want to be uh, fantastic and you want to grow exponentially, you do things differently than other folks. And I found that reading 
is one of those things and uh really the friends you hang out with they said you can tell a lot about people from the five friends they have and, and the books they have on the bookshelf and we know your bookshelf is loaded back there so we could we could already see a lot about mac and i actually keep my books in my book bag so when i travel if i'm whether i'm going to somebody's office or if i'm at a job site i usually can talk about something if i'm if i've read something in the last you know two months it's usually in my book bag so i pull it out and show it to him right there and i got mine's all highlighted up and i'm like yeah you know let me go find something real quick because i know i just read this so i'll pull it out again and I'll, I'll go back and refer to it but i found that that has uh enabled me to have conversations uh able to give people just nuggets in life because honestly at the end of the day uh, i just want to be a person that, that is known that was you know lived a righteous life wanted to do good by people and really just try to spread the, this knowledge around that's free and say hey it's right here if you're ever interested man this is the book i can show you what it find it at yeah that's that's awesome drop drop that nugget one more time from old myron golden what do you say about the fantastic few? Oh, say it again the fantastic few and the mediocre many you know oh. to be mediocre that that that's just exponential that's you an know, easy road ain't that that's that's incremental you know if you want to be fantastic then you're talking about something that's a little bit harder to do, but not many people are doing it, you know, so you'll separate yourself exponentially by doing that. Did, did you know about Myron Golden before I shared, shared about him with you? I've never heard of the guy. You know, you sent me he's, a, he's, a message he's awesome. day via text, and he's like, hey, man, if you get a second, check this guy out, you know, and I, as soon as you sent it, about 10 minutes later, I clicked on it, and I was like, wow, who is this guy? <laughs> Just the way that he talks and, and everything that he puts out there, uh he makes it very easy and relatable to understand what he's saying yeah especially if you're a person of faith because he's talking about business you know based on the scripture but the stuff he talks about just like me it applies to everybody whether you're a person of faith or not that doesn't matter yep that's the that's the beauty of having principles you know principles they reply across you know any industries and any walks of life the principle is the same yeah and that's where we got to develop our character because there's a lot of people who could teach us something but if 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 we so close-minded we don't want to have anything to do with them like somebody don't want to listen to him because he talks about the bible but they, yep. they gonna miss out on a lot of opportunity and <laughs> it's why you know i read and share quotes from people i don't necessarily like but i can still learn from them just like a bad oh, boss yeah. you ever learned anything from a bad boss leanders oh yeah you learn a lot sometimes you learn more <laughs> than you do a good boss <laughs> yeah learn what not to do and how not to be right oh yeah <clears throat> I got to tell you, though, this is Rhea's bookshelf back here. It got some of my books on it. This is kind of, we use her office kind of as a studio. I got a, my office got a lot of books on the bookshelf too, like that. And then we got, like you, we got, we got electronic books. We got audio books you, you can't see. But, but uh, have you ever met anybody, you know, blue collar or white collar? But really, you know, I won't focus my brand really on the blue collar folks. But again, we speak mm -hmm. to white collar groups all the time. I don't have nothing against them. I help them just as much as I help blue collar folks. But, there's plenty of folks talking to the white collar folks. There just ain't that many who, who have an interest in really developing the blue collar folks. That's why I started this brand to begin with. But have you ever seen any blue collar folks who are like you, who are intentional about growth? You know, like Jason Denham, he's one of those folks. And, and, and you know, people I don't know, but, but there's one thing that I know about all of the people is they live in a better life, especially personally. Mm -hmm. than the folks who ain't growing and developing themselves. Can you validate that too? When the people you know that have been growing, intentional about it? Um, absolutely. I, I would venture to say that that's pretty much 100% accurate, you know, especially, um, I mean, I've come across stuff that I would have never known about had I not opened a book, you know. Recently read a book, you know, 10X is easier than 2X. And when you think in terms of math, you're like, eh, there's no way that 10X is easier than 2X. But when you start getting into the information, you're like, oh, my, I see why this guy says 10X is easier than 2X. Same with the James Clear book. You know, he talks about habits, you know, uh, atomic habits. But when you get into that book, which I hadn't even opened the book yet, I've listened to some folks talk about it via podcast. He's really talking about deliberate practice. Has nothing to do with habits at all. And so... To me, like deliberate practice, all that stuff, it all relates to lean. It all relates to basically, uh, there was a quote you put in the book. I don't even remember who said it, but if you're not modeling what you're teaching, you're teaching something different. It might have been a mirror and I, but to me, that's one of the things that stood out to me because it's like, how can I say that, you know, I want to be uh, a holistically healthy person. I want to be lean. I talk to people about lean if I don't take care of myself. 
you know, that that's that's kind of crazy. So you, I got to take care of myself 360 degrees, not only just mentally, but physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Do what I need to do so I can be a better example for people. And they'll be like, you know what, that guy, what he's really talking about, he really believes that because I see the way he lives. And that's the way he yeah. lives. He lives that. Yeah, that, that's how you know those folks getting results because you see it in their life, right? Yep. And, and some of the people you've probably known before they started doing that and after they started reading and developing themselves and you see them have a, a shift in their life probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it'll definitely happen. I mean, you can see even a shift in the vocabulary. You know, once you start growing yourself intentionally, the yep. things that you used to talk about, it's like that curve. You get to a point where you, where you go to the top and you just start over. So you're learning. Yeah relearning and unlearning constantly and yep. that, that goes with you know not only your knowledge but the way that you talk the way that you address people the way that you have patience everything comes into play when you're actually developing yourself yep you're talking about plan do check and adjust that that loop oh, right yeah. the, lean, the yep. lean loop yeah so uh that actually the quote you were talking about a minute ago i actually that's actually my quote where i, I spun it off of uh abraham maslow so okay. I, I always say if you if you're not modeling what you're teaching you're teaching something else but it actually yep. comes from, I just say it a different way from Abraham Maslow. My, my son was selling Roth IRAs or something like that. And he was in a school and he, he saw this quote on the wall and he took a picture of it. And it was a quote from Abraham Maslow. And he says, he said, it. he said, uh, if we're not modeling what we're teaching, we're teaching something else. Is that what I said? I get these two confused. I get mine and his confused now. I can't even remember, it, but I'm trying to remember. Uh, he says, yeah, if you're not modeling what you're teaching, you're teaching something else. Oh, yeah, that's what Abraham Mas Maslow said. That's what you said a minute ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's yep. that's Maslow's quote. I get mine and his mixed up because they're so close together. But yeah, that, that's <laughs> that's credit to Abraham Maslow. And then then what I say is we're always teaching what we're mod modeling, regardless of what we're teaching. Yeah, it's just slightly different, but it means the same thing. But Eric took that picture, sent it to me. He, he didn't have any idea, but that's my favorite quote of all time. If we're not modeling what we're teaching, we're teaching something else because that's the truth. Everybody is a role model. Everybody's watching us do what we do, how we do it. We, we don't get to decide if we're going to be a role model because we already are. Mm -hmm. we, we get to decide what kind we're going to be. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. So that's that, that's good stuff, man. So let's talk about leadership and lean a little bit leans your background and you read the Kaizen book and it wasn't really nothing about continuous improvement when you got into it. Did that surprise you or you already kind of figured that out? Uh, I kind of already figured that out. And like I say, um, you heard it, it was almost, yeah, it was almost like the, uh, the missing link, you know, it's kind of like nobody really touches on this or talks about leadership. Like I say, it may be a one, two day. Oh, we send you off to do a leadership training, but, what I, what I found out in that book is it's got to be intentional. It's got to be something that you do daily. It's not like it's a, a destination you go to. This is a lifelong journey. And so if you look at it that way, then it changes the entire perspective on what you do. Because now if it's a journey, you know that if I get here, that's not the end of it. You know, So I got to continue to grow. And uh, I tell people, even if you look at the word knowledge itself, know the ledge know that there is no ledge know that knowledge is infinite there's an infinite amount of knowledge out here it's a matter of you know what you're going to do with it you know what i mean and then then the other thing with that is uh when i was growing up people used to say knowledge is power i would say man i 100 percent would say knowledge is not power because the power comes with when you have the wisdom and the understanding to be able to apply the knowledge if you have the knowledge and you do nothing with it you might as well not even have that knowledge you know so you got to have that wisdom and understanding on how to apply that knowledge and then how to make other people better with that knowledge. Yeah. And there's a lot of people with knowledge, but they don't have enough character to, to, to be able to use their knowledge because they can't get a job or can't keep a job. Right. Yep. So, so have you ever seen, you ever seen, uh, I mean, how long you been doing the lean component? How, how long has the lean um, component been a part of your journey? I will say it's been a part for about the last three and a half, four years. Okay. That's a good bit. So, so, you know, the two pillars, I, I teach two layers, as you know, from my book, but everybody else in the world seems to talk about the two pillars of lean, continuous improvement and respect for the people. Yep. So out of all, all the lean interactions you've had in lean construction anywhere, you ever seen anybody talk about respect for the people being the development of the people, the way that I talk about 
that I that's what I think respect for the people is. What um, what have you seen? What does that no, mean? What like, places you go? Like in LCI, we typically talk about lean uh, those two fundamental components as continuous improvement and uh, respect for people. We don't even say respect for the people. So when I saw respect for the people, I was like, oh, that makes sense to put the in front of that, you know, having respect for the people. But at the end of the day, uh, I mean, it's really should be all about people because people are the ones out here building these projects. People are the ones that are making things go. But as far as like literally development, and when you talk about growth and all that, I, I never really associated lean with leadership. I agree with you. I think it is the missing link. That was actually what we told them when we spoke it, when they want us to speak at the, the lean uh, Congress up there. And uh, th that's what I told her, you know, I'd call it, I want to talk about the missing link because it is the missing link. It's the key to, it's the key to being able to generate buy-in and then to, to sustain the gain once you actually implement some improvements. And most people don't, most people don't even know what they don't know. They don't, because a lot of people, what I've discovered during, you know, I logged 11,000 hours leading lean teams and all, all kind of places I went and met a lot of different people. But most of these, most companies think about respect for the people means including them in the event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let, let, <laughs> even if they don't let them say much, just put them on the event so they can see what's going on. That's like a bare minimum, you know, respect for the people. Some other ones think it means, you know, giving them a turkey at Thanksgiving and, a pat on the back, give them some ice cream, run an ice cream truck over there in the middle of the summer when it's hot. You know, that, that that's nice things to do. Yeah. I don't I don't see that as respect for the people. And and maybe I added the 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 in respect for the people. I thought it's always been that way, but maybe maybe I just always say it that way because the people are the ones that, that make it all happen to me. And it's absolutely we gotta respect them. So 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 you're not seeing any lean really really formal lean stuff you ever been to other lean trainings and things like that even um, outside of lci out outside of lci i've sat in on like uh lei which is kind of like lean enterprise institute uh hadn't been to any of their their formal uh trainings or anything like that but you know uh, to most people and, and to what you know i think of lean I, I think it's like a mindset you know this is the mindset we're going to be in continuous improvement we're going to be talking about uh you know having respect for the people how to make things more efficient uh, but I never really equated leadership with me, you know, and then, you know, I never really equated leadership with character development, you know, and so just seeing these things and it's like, oh my goodness, man, what, I should have found this 10 years ago, you know what I mean? Like, wow, what what have I been doing, you know? But but it separates you, it's going to separate you and it's going to elevate you. You can already see that coming, right? And throughout the rest of your career, closing that, making that connection, you you see, because 10 years from now, it's going to be, you know, 10 years you've been knowing this. Right now, you say, I wish I'd learned it 10, 20 years ago. But yep. 10 years from now, you're going to have that under your belt. What do you think is going to be different just because you've connected those dots? Because it takes a high degree of character to connect those dots. Everybody ain't going to connect those dots. Oh, yeah. No, what I really think is going to be different is uh, once you have this this uh, foundation of character development, like I say, it's it's no longer a destination of something you, you're trying to go to. It's something you're trying to grow to now. And so when you continue to grow, it's just like the, the evolution, you know, the, the cycle just goes round and round. So I can see, you know, 10 years from now, just looking back and reflecting where I am now and being like, man, you know, I'm, I'm not even the same person I was, you know, 10 years alone, let alone, I'm probably not even the same person I was last year, you know? <laughs> so you can see just when you look back, and if you, especially if you live in that, uh, what I call the game mindset, you, you just compare yourself to who you was. And it's always a win-win uh, game at that point. You know, it's not like you're comparing yourself to, you know, some ideal or somebody else. You know what I mean? You compare yourself to who you was and you're always gaining. Yeah, man, that's that's good stuff too. You, 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 you're a sponge. Everybody who does this is a sponge. I'm a sponge. Ria's a sponge. You a sponge. Jason, everybody. When I say sponge, I'm talking about you soak. You allow this stuff to soak in you. you like you can't get it out. You you yep. open up your pores and it comes in. And those we're the ones going to change this world and make it better. Either it ain't going to happen. It's people like yep. us. I mean, that's that's why you're on this, this podcast today, Leandris, because I know you're one of those people. Now, you probably heard, you know, game knows game. We do know. 
Me, <laughs> we, we do know when you meet somebody, oh, you yeah. know if they're serious about this kind of stuff, right? You know it. Yep. You you can't hide it. So, so uh, what's 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 something that that you that's a go to for you when you're talking to a lot of people? Like, like somebody asks you, man, you talking about all these books and stuff? What's what's the most important thing you ever learned out of a book like that? You know, if you're trying to talk me into it, what's the, what's your go to thing? Uh, the most important thing, um, who you are matters. Mm. To me, that is one thing that uh, has always stood out to me. And um, I, I got that from a book that was uh, The Only Leaders Worth Following. Uh, Tim Spiker wrote it. And to me, that book, uh, I've never thought about it, but it was just a simple question. It was, you know, uh, it was the title of it was Who You Are the only leaders worth following but who not what three words so who you are matters more so than what you do and he goes through and he breaks it down about you know all this research they did and if you ask people today like yeah, tell me about the best leader you ever followed and why i guarantee you everything they're going to tell you about is who that person was not what that person did so that to <laughs> me tells you that who you are really matters and who yeah, you man. are is all about character development so I just ask people, or I just say three things now, you know, who, not what, you know, people are like, what do you mean? I was like, who, not what, man, who you are matters, matters more than what you do. And so when you tell folks that they use are like, well, how do you know? Or, you know, or why do you say that? And I was like, well, this is why I say that. And then you, and you start telling them about it. Even the one where you talk about, you know, people get hired for what they know, they're technical cops. And usually when they, they get released from a job and they get fired, it's because of who they are. Same thing. Who, not what, you know? Yeah, so man. Who you are really matters. Yeah, that's an important point. I'm glad you brought that up. You know, people, because people who are questioning, you know, the value of character, you know, some people who don't know what they don't know, they'll say, no, it's competency, man. Competency is what mm -hmm. you got. You got to get those licenses. You got to get those certifications. You got to get those degrees and all that sort of stuff. But in, anybody can, can validate people get hired for what they know most often and get fired for who they are most often. And I always say, I ain't, I ain't had anybody yet to tell me a reason somebody got fired that I couldn't ask a couple questions and help them figure out it was always character. Every time, yeah. even, you know, Jason Denham, you were talking about him one time. And one time he said, he said, yeah, Mr. Mack, though, I, he said, I hired a guy one time told me he could do, you know, he had some kind of skill or something. He could operate a certain kind of equipment or something. And he, whatever it was, it was related to competency. And he said, I hired him, got him on a job. and and we had to let him go because he couldn't do it. We need somebody who could do it. He said that was, that was competency. Mr. Mac, he, he, he didn't have the skill, had to be competency. <laughs> I said, you told me, you, you said he told you he could do it, but he couldn't do it. He said, yeah. I said, well, it sounded like he lied to you. That's a character problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always a character problem. You know, and Dr. Henry cloud, you may have heard or read me share the quote from him, but he shared, he says that, uh, uh, character is the ability to meet the demand of reality mm. and integrity is the courage to meet the demand of reality. And I love those two definitions, but what, what that means to me is every single thing in my life that ain't the way it's supposed to be is, is rooted in my character, the way that it is today. So unless I'm willing to change my values, my circumstance ain't going to change like you were talking about, right? Like circumstance. Ha have you read my, my 10 foundational elements of intentional transformation book by chance. Um, I don't think I have yet. It's the little man's busting out of the chains, out of chain and lock on the front cover. You may, I don't think I got that one. You may want to check that out. And the reason I'm sharing and in real put a, at the bottom, but you can go to my download page and, and actually anybody can and go read the first five chapters of that book, any of the other books, but much as you like talking to people and helping people like you did the guy at the counter that day, Mm -hmm. That may be one of them books for you that are like a lot of books for me. You may not literally need that book for you personally. You may get some nuggets out of it, but you may need that book to help some other people who really need personal transformation. So I would, you know, just a little mentoring moment for you after you told me that story. That's that's a book you you may want to dive in. I read a lot of books that I know it ain't for me. But but what's weird about it is I read those books and usually within a week, I didn't have to tell somebody they need to read that book because it, <laughs> it was for them. <laughs> yeah, I read a book, uh, Jimmy Collins, former COO and president of Chick-fil-A recommended that he started reading it when he was 10 years old. It's called T-Model Tommy. 
and uh, it was written in the 20s and 30s. And it's fiction, but it's a story about a, a young boy who just try. He just figures out how to make it happen. He starts a, a trucking business, hauling hauling stuff. But he started with a broke down truck. But anyway, he told me about it, and I went and read that book. Man, it was only like a week after I finished it. I was talking to somebody somewhere, and they were talking about their teenager trying to get them in gear for life. I mm. said, "Man, I got a book you need to read. Maybe you do a book study with with your kid." But it's T Model Tommy. That that kid, I mean, made it happen. Anyway, have you ever read a book like that that wasn't for you? But you, you, after you read it, you knew, you know, somebody came into your life or was already in your life and and you knew I need I need to share either something you took away or share that book, bought them a book and give it to them, anything like that? Yeah, I think uh, that book 10X is easier than 2X. I mean, it's a book that they say is written for entrepreneurs. I mean, I'm not an entrepreneur myself, but there was some uh, there were some things in there kind of as I was reading through it that I talked to a couple friends of mine who were um, in the midst of, you know, already had businesses or starting the businesses. And I would, uh, I would be reading stuff and I'd, I'd call them up and ask them like, Hey, you ever heard about, uh, you know, 10 X is easier than two X. And they was like, no, nah, I don't even know what that is. And so I'm like, okay, man, I got a book. Uh, I, I'm reading this thing. And they're talking about all these people in here, like James clear talking about a lady who, who basically started off with, with $30,000. And, um, now she's a, a multi-millionaire from from real estate but they all had this 10x mindset and this 10x mindset really was basically 80 20 that you know 80 percent of the stuff the output you get is really only from 20 percent of the inputs that you got and even yep. that fact you tell people that and they're like well how do you know that i'm like man dude, you if you start looking at everything you do i, I can almost <laughs> guarantee they kind of coincide with that so just even stuff like that you know just putting it out there like I said, when I read stuff, I literally try to go out in the next, you know, 24, 36, 72 hours, whether I'm talking to my friends, my family, somebody at work, and try to start applying it to see if I can figure out how to make it work for me, what I read, you know, it's like, yeah, maybe this does work, maybe it doesn't, but I'm gonna figure it out, you know, so I'll just try to, you know, start dropping nuggets to people just from stuff I'm reading. That, that's awesome. You you remind me a lot, a lot of me back when I started this. I don't know if it, it if you read, I don't know if I wrote this in my Kaizen book or some other book may not have, but you remember reading about me carrying my books in my backpack when I'd go into those lean, yep. those lean events. Okay. Yep. So it was the same way as you described a minute ago. Back then I didn't have a big bookshelf full of books, but I had a backpack full of books and I took them <laughs> with me everywhere I went. And that's one right. You know, people ask me, how do I learn all this stuff? You know, that I talk about and write about. And it was just like you described. I, I started teaching, you know, sharing it with the people on the Kaizen events and I'd had to go pull the book out. I couldn't remember some things I could remember, but a lot of times what I could remember, I wanted to tell, I couldn't remember what to, to say it, but I knew where it was at in that book. I had the pages yep. folded up that somehow I could exactly. remember. I go grab that book and I'd whoop it out. I'd read that quote. First thing people say after that, what's the title of that book? Right. <laughs> so I, I encourage to do that to people to do that, carry a book like, uh, Assad, Assad, uh, Murdoch. I just interviewed him the other day. He'll be, he'll be coming out sometime. He's already out if you're watching this video. So he, you may want to go check out Assad, but he, he says he carries book with him everywhere he goes. Usually my books, they're nice and little and short chapters, but he, he really likes the blue collar leadership books. It's really changed him and transformed the way he does his leadership, but he's always got that book. And he says the same thing. And that's what you've seen too, right? Yes. Yeah. I've seen the same thing, cause especially when you can pull a book out and show it to somebody, they're like, oh man, this guy is really serious about this, you know? But to me, I remember I had, a, I was getting in the elevator uh, and it's probably about a month ago at work and I got a leather, uh, almost like a leather book bag. It looks, it's pretty big. And the guy says, man, that, that book bag must be pretty heavy. What do you got in that thing? I said, man, I got my computer, my, my iPad. I probably got about 12 books in here. He's like, hey, I like you it. still carry around books? I said, yeah. <laughs> Usually, uh, I, I've tried to read a book here about every two weeks, and then when I when I get done with them, I just throw them in my book bag just in case I have to flip back and reference it. He's like, "Man, that's pretty impressive." <laughs> that's good. It it is it is impressive, but it's impressive about who who you are. I mean, you really want to learn that stuff, and you want to help other people. And you know, that's have you read my Ten Values of High Impact Leaders book by chance? Is it one of those four or five you got? The uh, black cover. I think I got that one. Yep. 
it's a little yeah. bit it's a different format it's got like 10 sections in it it's got about 10 yeah. page chapters or whatever but it's got the value of significance is is the last value and it talks about moving from success to significance and i don't know if you really consciously realize that at any point that you actually probably like we all got to focus on our own success we got to become successful before we help other people become successful but John Maxwell talks about only about 10% of people who truly become successful are willing to sacrifice and help others become successful. You, mm -hmm. you, you've made that transition. There ain't no doubt about that. You, you, you got a mindset focused on significance, helping other people, but do you know when that happened for you? Some people um, may have been that way the whole life, but I, I wasn't, I had to, <laughs> I had to learn to care about other people. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think I kind of have a, uh had that that inkling uh, i would say from from an early age but um actually i never even thought about you know going from you know that step you just talked about but i i can see now that uh in my mind i i, I saw something i read it was oh man it was a few years ago and then i reread this book not too long ago and uh it was it was an acronym in there that related to peace an acronym was positive energy always creates elevation and so when i saw that it immediately dawned on me it's like man you know every, everything that i that i do moving forward i want to put positive energy out into into the universe and you know all this leadership stuff all this character development to me it's really all about you know putting positivity out there and being positive about things because it's so easy to be negative especially when we consider everything that's going on around us in the world uh, all the circumstances that people are going through, kind of like I told that gentleman at the counter, man, your, your circumstances doesn't determine who you are. That could change tomorrow, you know, but so many people are, are caught up in just physically in that circumstance. They can't see outside of that. So I think just spreading that, that positive information, whether it's a book you're reading or just that positive energy period to me, like that 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 word peace positive energy always creates elevation once i realized that and i just took that and ran with it that's good stuff man you soaking it up so so you only two or three years into this journey yep so i don't i don't mean to scare you but but four years <laughs> into my journey i gave up everything to do this i mean that's what happened to me i gave and then a year later you know real was you know i was been I was broke right off the bat because i gave up yep you know, for me back at that time, it was strong, strong six figure, you know, consulting job. I was booked solid every week. So I was making, mm -hmm. I made plenty, way more cash than me and Rhea needed. I wasted most of it. I, I had a lot of work to do, but what I did <laughs> back then was waste. I wasted my time. I wasted my money. You know, I did all, all the wrong things, but I was having a fun. I had a lot of fun, but I wasted a lot of money. But four years into this, I got, you know, and doing it with the lean teams, you know, all about that from the Kaizen book. But four mm -hmm. years into it, I gave up all my contracts and went went to zero. And and because I wanted, you know, I had shifted from success to significance. And and, and I would recommend to check you check check your book stack for me. If if you ain't read the Ten Values book, there's some gold in that book. Ten Values of High Impact Leaders. And you may not have read it because you, you probably would have remembered that significance. You know, we, we got a lot of books. You might have got confused yep. with, with a different one, but that's that's one that transformation book with the Ten Values of high impact leaders it one you probably would you definitely get a lot out of that one. but anyway yeah. the reason i'm telling you this is because i didn't see it coming i, I just got so <laughs> hungry and then i got so broke because i gave up all my income and then yeah a year later Rio was jealous of me being broke so she she gave up her her job and got broke with me so then we both <laughs> broke <laughs> but you never know man you know people i meet who are like you i don't know if you'd ever do you know what i'm doing but you don't ever know you know you ain't got to do it full time you're already doing it part time i mean you're yep. already doing it it's just in you and it's coming out but you keep you keep dumping this kind of stuff into your mind and then you keep dumping it into other people's lives because john maxwell says once you taste significance you don't ever go back to success because it feels so good like helping that guy at that counter that was a little bitty mm -hmm. thing but that was a moment of significance you felt good but he felt good too and it feels yep. good to help other people feel good especially Absolutely. when they're struggling in life what yeah, do you I think about what's that, that mean to you how, how uh, do you feel when you help somebody who's struggling no to me it, it's it's it feels better I, i've always uh, i guess the saying was it's it's better to uh, give than to receive 
it's almost feels better, you know, helping other people than it is getting getting help myself because you know, um, to me, I felt like that even with that that interaction at that counter, I felt like that young man uh, really needed that at that time, you know, and you know, here I am, I probably had. You know, 10,000 things I probably could have told him about, but I just said, man, I want to tell you about, uh, you know, your circumstances and how they don't define who you are. And, and you know, just something that powerful, that, that may have changed his his course of the week, you know. He, he may have went home and, and did something a little differently, but just the fact that you can take information that you're consuming from, from other authors and podcasts and give that to other people, now, to me, that's that's pretty powerful. That, yeah, that's good stuff. That's, you know, that's being a, like John Maxwell teaches, being a, a river, not a reservoir. You're not just mm-hmm. holding and collecting it just so I can do better. You, you being a river, letting it flow into you and, and, and it, through you and into other people. And that's, that's powerful, man. Do you have a podcast already? Uh, no, I don't. You haven't thought don't about have a it? I podcast, although uh, I've, this is probably maybe my fifth or sixth uh, kind of appearance on the podcast I've done in the last about a year and a half, two years. Um, I mean, I've thought about uh, possibly starting a podcast, maybe even uh, doing some uh, type of motivational speaking. I'm not sure what I want to do, but I, I do believe that something along those lines is going to be um, definitely coming up in, in the future for me, you know, because you never know. It's it's, it's all about really how, how the spirit moves you, you know what I mean? Yep. So, so you- so I, I hope you do think about it some more and, and maybe you start doing it because I world needs all the help it can get. But but for you personally, it would be the same way it is it, it is for me. You know, when I'm doing my mm-hmm. regular podcast where it's just me talking, it's just a yeah. la- it's just a way for me to reinforce the things I'm learning. You know, it keeps me sharp in a way because I, I I just, you know, get my microphone out and decide what I'm going to talk about. And I talk about it for 30 minutes. But when I first started, I only did like five to eight minute podcast episodes. And, and people probably would like somebody to just do that. I just can't do that anymore. I got too much to talk about. <laughs> but 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 you can get on Spotify if you don't know about it. You do it for free, man. You know it's okay. easy. Spotify is free. You can start. You can talk by yourself. You can do whatever you want. You know you can do if you like video. You can do record yourself right there. Start a, a YouTube channel and all kind of ways you can do it. But somebody with with a gift for soaking this up, like like you are. You get you, you you already putting it out there, but you might become more intentional. But you could do it as a way to develop yourself. You know, while yeah. you're developing yourself and sharing your key points, and you also m- memorializing them for yourself. But when you meet somebody like that young guy, if you had a podcast on that, you could say, "Hey, man, I got a podcast. It's the name of it. Go check out episode whatever." And you can give him some gold right there. But if he'll go check out your podcast. He may listen to a hundred of them. I've got people who've listened to all 300 and something of my almost 400 podcasts. And yep. some of them, I don't even know who they are. <laughs> yeah. So I, I hope you do it. You know, it don't take, I mean, you could, you could do it however long you want to talk. Say if you talk for five or 10 minutes, I mean, you you could, it wouldn't take you much longer than five or 10 minutes to publish it and release the podcast. It's, I mean, it's so simple. Spotify may, it's easy, easy, easy. However long okay. you talk, Give yourself a couple of minutes on either side of it to schedule it, put it out there. If you want to do it simple, some people make it all fancy. I, I ain't doing all that. If I had to do all that, I wouldn't do it at all. <laughs> Mine just going to be simple and authentic, just like these videos. Reels are in the background running running some stuff, helping us out. But So so we, we almost an hour into this thing, man. Do you have anything you want to share or talk about that I didn't ask you about or you hadn't got off your chest yet that's important to you? Um, You know, to be honest, I don't have anything else I want to share. I mean, I, I didn't even realize we were almost at an hour. <laughs> you know, it's kind of just been, you know, a pretty uh, free flowing conversation. But, you know, I, I will say that uh, the whole uh, lean uh, mindset, uh, lean in construction is definitely a small subset of individuals. So if there are folks that are out there that have any interest in, in uh, lean or doing something from a continuous improvement, respect for the people out there that are in the, the lean community, and please feel free to reach out. Uh, there's a whole subset of us and, and, and we'd love to, to welcome you into our fold and you know make things better for you, really. So, so you're open to just somebody randomly contacting you at your LinkedIn or on your email that Rio just popped up there. You, 
you okay to just like I am? You want to help? Absolutely. I, I, I do. The, I do the same thing myself. I randomly contact people all the time. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really, uh, I think uh, one of the other things I would say is uh, along with, with, you know, people doing all this work, I believe that relationships are very important, especially in, in uh, most industries, but more so in the construction industry. So I'm, I'm all about building relationships and, and, and making those deposits so you can go to the bank one day and you might have to make that withdrawal. But if you don't have those relationship deposits, you can't make that withdrawal. So you got you to start with somewhere. It might be an email or sending somebody a message and say, you know, I, I'd like to get 15 minutes of your time just to introduce myself, uh, say thanks for connecting with me. And, and maybe there's some things that we can talk about where our paths across where we can help one another or help somebody else. That's that's good stuff, man. You've you definitely added value to to my audience here. And and uh, I, I really appreciate it. What what made you what made you say, OK, when I say, hey, man, you want to be on this podcast? It's just because you're starting to get out more. Or what was it that made you say, um, yeah, I, I'll do it? Cause you know what we're Honestly, talking about. Um, I, I had no clue we were going to talk about, you know, but I figure uh, whatever is going to talk about, it was uh number one, it was probably going to make me better. Number two, it's probably going to spark some interest, especially for uh, some of the people in the uh, construction community, the design and construction community. So the, the better we can get more interest in design and construction about leadership, lean personal growth development, the more it's going to be for everybody. So that was really my biggest thing is, you know, how can I use this as a platform to to reach people that I may or may not know that's in the design and construction space and say, OK, hey, if you guys got any questions, I mean, like I say uh, to me, it, there's power and unity. You know, the more of us that are together and, and are really concerned about uh, improving things that we do on an everyday basis, the better it is. Yeah, man, that's awesome. So I really appreciate you being here. If you ever start that podcast, you make sure you reach out to me. I'll, I'll be a guest on your show. If you ever do guests, some people don't do guests, but yep. but, but I'd be happy to to be on yours. And then, you know, when it comes out, I'll share it with my network and people learn about you through me, that kind of thing. So I'll be happy to do that. I feel like you're probably going to be doing something like that one of these days. It's just, you, it's just part of the journey. You, you ain't going to be able to help yep. it. It's, it's just part of it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Hopefully I get to meet you one day, man. If, if I'm up in Nashville, I, last year, uh, some, somebody at the leadership development group at Vanderbilt university actually reached out and mm -hmm. said they were going to bring us up to do some type of development with some of their blue collar folks. They said they got a, you know, an awesome leadership program, but they, they wanted blue collar leadership for their blue collar folks. I don't know if they're going to follow through with it. They told me they already had set it up in the budget and all that stuff, but you know, people change their mind, things change and, I don't know yep. if they'll do it or not, but I'm going to be thinking about you if I'm headed to Nashville, man, one when, when of these days. See if I can meet you oh, and yeah. shake your hand. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Leandris, we're going to wrap it up today, man. I really appreciate you being here. And uh, if you ain't got nothing else, we're going to sign off. You good? I'm good. I appreciate you. All right. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. Talk to you next time. Make it happen or someone else will. It might as well be you. Are you serious about taking your career and your life to the next level and beyond? Check out Max Story's Blue Collar Leadership Series books and others, now available on audio, along with paperback and ebooks at Amazon, iTunes, and Audible. Please visit bluecollarleadership.com to learn about Max books, programs, special offers, certifications, and more. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast.